I'm Bridget Walsh and I'm here today as uh, a private citizen um, and I am a real estate broker and of course real estate brokers are always concerned about property values and my attention was drawn to um, City Park when we moved here a few years ago as being a beautiful historical place full of rest and whoops there goes the truck from the zoo rest and peace and quiet, a lovely place to be. And then uh, one day when I was walking by the lake, I noticed um, the elephant exhibit was going in. And um, I wondered if the people who designed it had any awareness that they were part of a historic park. Um, the city park is uh, over 100 years old. It is an Olmsted Park, which means that it was designed by the firm that designed Central Park in New York City and um, it is very historic and um, if you can look at this um, back of the Toyota elephant exhibit it isn't doesn't really match um, the, the historic nature of the park so then um, as time went by I became aware that um, the zoo was also going to install a biomass gasification plant to recycle uh, the waste, they said ostensibly, from the zoo. Um, and I became concerned. And um, I started to look into it a little bit. And I realized that, that a biomass gasification plant is an industrial plant. And that it, <laughs> it involves hot gas. It involves uh, potentials for explosions, toxic waste, uh, toxic ash, sludge. Uh, toxic water um, and so I began to ask questions so I emailed uh, a gentleman who is a um, an expert on biomass gasification his name is Hare Nuf and he's from the Netherlands and for the last 28 years he's been installing biomass gasification plants um, Hare was part of uh, a multi-year multi-disciplinary multi-country study and report on biomass gasification for smaller plants like the zoo. Um, and they pointed out that one of the most important things uh, that people are usually not aware of and don't do a good job on is risk assessment. Um, and they point out that uh, a risk assessment should be done very early on in the project. And as of December 15th, uh, the zoo at city council stated they didn't have one. At any rate, I emailed um, Harry and asked him um, if he, what he thought about uh, installing a biomass uh, gasification plant in a zoo, in a park, in a residential area of Denver. And Harry replied, it is not common to install an industrial plant near a zoo or a residential neighborhood, mainly for safety reasons and transportation issues. The heat produced by a gasification plant can be transported to an end user while the power can be fed into the grid. So I would not recommend to install such a plant near the zoo, but somewhere at, for instance, the border of Denver, uh, where we usually have the zoning for industrial plants like this. Um, so then I um, started to look a little further and I found that the zoo had done an engineering design and operation plan. Um, the whole first page is taken up with confidential business information disclosures. Um, and as you go through the um, as you go through the report, there are many questions that are raised, um, but much of it, uh, there, there is no data, there's no answer, because it's all claimed to be confidential business information, which leads one to wonder what a, a, a nonprofit is um, doing, claiming that a industrial biomass gasification plant that they're installing in the zoo uh, should be covered by um, confidential business information. Um, another concern I had was the lack of citizen input. Uh, the zoo, and they're all very nice people. They're all very earnest people. Uh, so um, I want to make that point. But apparently when this project got going, they didn't really go out and ask people what they thought about having a biomass gasification plan in their, um, in their park. Uh, they didn't explain um, the dangers, they just sort of did, um, they did promos, happy monkeys jumping on them, talking about 
oh, safe, safe green energy. Uh, the, the technology is over 100 years old. And, um, they didn't really explain to people. So they went to neighborhood organizations and they made their uh, presentation of a project in progress. And people sort of said, well, that's interesting. Come back when you have some details. And uh, the zoo, um, I don't. I guess they didn't get back to them because there is not one resolution that was passed by any recognized neighborhood or registered neighborhood organization that I can find uh, that um, shows that they approved of it. So we are concerned about the lack of citizen input for this design. We we refer to this as Gulag 15. Um, it sort of looks like the back of a, a Walmart loading zone or even the back of a federal penitentiary. You know. Um, it's not really very attractive anyway. Um, and then the issue arose of who is making these decisions. So in 2010, when the zoning laws changed, city council, apparently tired of the arguments and the disputes about City Park, offloaded all responsibility for decision making onto one poor individual. Uh, who now has to take all the flack for all the decisions and she has to make all the decisions for the park um, and she's the director of the Department of Parks and Recreation. She alone decides and signs off on all of this with no citizen input required. So that's, that's something that we feel, uh, I feel, the city council needs to address uh, and to take back that power. So that is... Um, that's of control. That's of, of concern. And then the other question I have, aside from um, the particulars, uh, the engineering particulars, why is the zoo uh, designing a biomass gasification plant from scratch when you can buy um, out of the box systems that are already tested? This is this is an experiment. This is an experimental program. This is sort of like a big science fair project. Not to demean the work they've done, they've been very sincere, but it is uh, an untested, uh, and when you read through the material they've provided, it's untested. Uh, everything is, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, or it's covered by confidential business information. So um, one of the concerns that we have is the liability. Um, many plants um, around the world um, have not met the expectations of the builders. There have been explosions, there have been toxic gas leaks, uh, there's been groundwater contamination, and these, these are not just rare instances. These are things that happen, um, that have happened with some frequency. And so you wonder why the zoo didn't just buy something that had been tested, that had a manual, that had all the valves were all tested. Um, so that's of concern. And then finally, I'm concerned about liability. Uh, when this thing, if it should have accidents, uh, for example, the air uh, in their engineering report, they say that the air from the, um, from the plant room, from the, from the machine room, is going to be shared with the elephant house. And they're going to monitor the air inside of the elephant house. Well. I think that's because they need to get the heat because they did this big subtropical exhibit, you know, so they need heat. But what are you going to be doing? Standing there with your kid one day looking at the elephants and one of them is going to fall over and you'll know it's time to run? You know, it's sort of, are they the, the new canaries in the, in the mine? Um, so if in fact there is an accident, if there's groundwater contamination, um, there, if there's an explosion uh, in the gasification process, they're heating up the manure and Toast, to, they're toasting it all at over 700 degrees, and there are a lot of toxic gases. Um, uh, there's a possibility of suffocation, of you name it, it's there. So who is going to be liable if this happens? Is it going to be the Zoo Foundation, or is it going to be the citizens of Denver who are going to be picking up the tab, uh, much like they've picked up the tab for the sheriffs and the police and um, all of these egregious things that have happened. Who is going to pick up the tab if this thing goes? And that's really a big question. I did pose it to a city attorney, um, and she referred me back to the PR people at the zoo and said that it was a, um, a zoo initiative, um, and she declined or deferred. So, um, but that's a big question for me. And then it winds back down to quality of life um, when 
the zoo is uh, right now they claim that they are going to just be recycling the um, stuff from the zoo the waste from the zoo but they already have a plan uh, is all completed it's called a draft about how they can accept waste from outside um, the zoo and outside of the parks and their preferred method is dump trucks. They want people to bring it in a dump trucks. I'm hoping that they have answers for all of my questions and that they've covered all their bases, but we don't know yet. And um, uh, we're looking forward to more communication with the zoo uh, and more collaboration and um, more uh, involvement, citizen involvement, so that uh, we'll have more of an idea of what's going on and we can be reassured so I think people should be asking these questions and they should be involved and they should uh, have some answers. Um, they could ask their city council people what they think about the biomass gasification plant. Uh, and they could also ask them uh, what they think about city council having uh, given up any control over the parks and ask them if they think it's a good idea uh, that city council, which is the, the, the citizens' direct link into government, uh, should take back the responsibility for the park and um, uh, and relieve that poor beleaguered one soul over Department of Parks and Recreation who unfairly has had <laughs> the entire responsibility dumped in her lap.